Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Gran Turismo 7's 1.44 update. Now, as many of you have probably already seen online, this update is a pretty cool one. So most updates since the Lake Louis update, the Spec 2 update, if you will, we've had a bunch of really lackluster car selections, to be quite frank. So the fact that we have the 2016 Audi R8 V10 Plus, Lamborghini Urus, and then this one. It is the 1999 Toyota GT1, also known as the TS020. And that alone, the fact that Polyphony is finally adding, finally wrapping up, adding the last cars that have been in their franchise forever that have significant heritage value to the franchise is amazing. And of course with the update, there's a couple of new events, but here's where it gets interesting. After the update was released, people on social media started noticing something. It's like, hey, wait a minute. We have a new World Championship 900 PowerPoint level Lama track. Does it actually kind of pay out well? So people have noticed that it is a 10 lap race around Lama, 900 PowerPoint limit. And it pays out 400,000 credits. Which, as far as payouts go, that's actually pretty significant. And it's been a while since we've had a new race being added that has such a large payout. So I wanted to do a quick reference here. So the three of the tracks that everybody has a tendency to grind is the Sardegna Road Track. That is the World Touring Car 800. And including the Clean Race bonus, you're getting 727,500 credits, which is pretty decent. The math that I've put behind it is that the average race time, if you're kind of slow like me, is anywhere between 26 and 28 minutes with an average 26,944 credits per minute or thereabouts. The next one that people do is the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the World Touring Car 700, which is a timed limit race of 30 minutes. Of course, the average time can kind of vary depending on where you end up on the track and that would be anywhere between 30 and 35 minutes. The payout, including the clean race bonus, is 825,000 credits. And if including that 30 to 35 average time limit, it's about an average of 25,385 credits per minute. And then last but not least, the rather infamous one, the Circuit de Spa Francorchamps, the World Touring Car 800, that one pays out 1 million credits for an hour-long race. Again, you can potentially be over that hour-long time frame for an average race time, but the average credits per minute is about 24,390. In order for this race to be viable, the other tracks have anywhere between 24,000 credits per minute in 26,000 credits per minute. So what does that leave us with? If we're calling it, if let's just say we'll have a pit stop halfway through the race. So we're averaging close to about four minutes a lap times 10 laps. It's 40 minutes divided by our potential of 600,000 credits, 15,000 credits per minute. That unfortunately is not good enough to do a grind. So what do I mean about that? Well, long story short, by the time you're done with this one race, you'll have been partway through a second run of Sardegna, and it'll take two of these, nearly two of these, to equal one Sardegna. So not only is Sardegna a clear winner over at least this version of Le Mans, it is a clear winner over the other two tracks I like to grind, which is the Le Mans 700 and the 
spot to Frankishon, 800. Those two, you have to constantly be checking your radar for if there's any weather coming on up. And I haven't raced this lawn enough to be able to tell if weather comes in or not. But I think when it comes to Serdagna, I don't think I've ever seen any weather whatsoever. I think I've seen it get cloudy once. So normally with Serdagna, you can just throw on a, some hard tires and you can just race around and you can listen to music. You can watch TV. I've honestly done... I've used remote play on a Steam Deck and had TV up going while I'm watching it. And, like, I'm barely focusing on Sir Dignan anymore. It's all completely muscle memory with the Mazda 787B. But regardless, even if you don't have to worry about weather in this one, the amount of time that you're spending on this to the amount of credits that you're actually not getting... It's unfortunately not worthwhile. But the other thing that I wanted to discuss as well is the constant calls that many fans, fans, quote unquote, have for, well, Polyphony, you need to just add more tracks and you need to add more tracks and add more tracks. Looking at the track list for this game, I think it's for the most part, pretty comprehensive. Yes, there are a handful of fictional tracks that, or rather, tracks from previous games that we don't have anymore, like the Street Circuits of Seattle, the Street Circuits of Hong Kong. I know there are a couple other fictional tracks that could be in this game but aren't quite yet. But for the most part, we have a lot of really neat tracks already. I think ultimately what the fans say that you need to add more tracks. I think what they're more referring to is they're begging Polyphony to add more tracks to grind. Because at this point, I've had all the cars in this game for six months now. And I've enjoyed, I've really, really, really enjoyed going over like the circuit experiences, going over the missions, and going through tracks that I haven't had a whole lot of time with previously. Dragon Trail from Croatia is such a unique track. I love that. I, it's a seriously underrated track. And I would honestly love to have Deep Forest Raceway and all these other uh, Grand National Highway. I would love them to have their own versions of the World Touring Car 700 or World Touring Car 800 or even... World Touring Car 900 and have like a 30 minute race on those because for the most part they're just kind of like I don't know use the supercar at the high end they're not a whole lot of longer endurance races for those and I think that having longer endurance races in general would help create a better experience for some of the more diehard fans or the individuals that have put a ton of time into this game. So having longer endurance races, I've what I've normally done is I've tried to replicate the Spa 800 with the Lama track here. I've tried to do a custom race where you pay out like well, not pay out, but you, you cap it at a performance level of 800 and you do it for an hour, but you have like a 24-hour night cycle, day-night cycle. And that has honestly been really fun, especially when you add in weather. So I'm glad that Polyphony is adding more Le Mans tracks or more Le Mans variations where you've got this higher end, the GT2 bracket, and then you've got the... Le Mans 700, which is mainly the GT4 bracket. It'd be cool to see if they have, like, a GT3 bracket coming in the future where they do cap it at an hour and they do the same thing that they did with the Spa 800. Because, I mean, all they really have to do is they basically create a custom race setup and then they just add it in for the potential events. So I honestly can't think it's that hard to, like, program in a new event. 
So if they are going to do that, add more Lama endurance races. Why not add Lama? Well, why not add endurance races for the Force Raceway and Grand National Highway? So one of the final things that I want to touch on as well is for those individuals begging for more and more races and events to be added, more endurance races, more longer races to be involved with. Honestly, at this point, I think Polyphony have probably done enough because they're probably missing out on an entire race mode. That is the Gran Turismo 7 Sport Mode, which ironically I've actually just started recently like really getting into and I've done it every now and again just play a couple of races so I could try to get that platinum trophy and I think if you really dive deep into the sport mode and do the daily races and make sure that you do it on an actual daily if not weekly basis I think you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Yes, of course, there's going to be a lot of rammers, a lot of, you know, people like that. But I've noticed all in all, when I've been doing it, I've tried to be pretty reserved, very conservative when I'm, like, near a pack of drivers. But then there are times where, like, when I get into a one-on-one -on -one duel with somebody, I try really hard not to hit them. And, man, it is some of the most rewarding driving I've ever done in this game. Because in most parts, it's like you're facing AI that are completely, like, oblivious to your existence. They'll keep on going on a racing line, and they'll just, like, pit and maneuver you because they just don't see you. Which is weird, because this is a game where you're driving, and they're supposed to drive around you to create that immersion. Regardless, the sport mode has been really fun, in my mind. So for the people that are begging for more and more races, just go play online. And I just remembered that part of their their argument may be that they can't afford the PlayStation Plus membership. And to be honest, I don't blame them. I'm still using my purchased all at once year lawn membership that I got last year that I bought for less than $60. And now it's already well over 80 so yes, I will sympathize. I will sympathize with those individuals who just physically can't afford to do online mode. I don't blame ya, but I do think there is some merit there. If you do want to like try picking up PlayStation Plus just for even a month, just to really dive deep into smart mode, I think you guys really will enjoy it, especially as of recent. I've had, like I said, I've had some very good lobbies that yes you'll get one or two people that are constantly dive bombing constantly hitting the walls constantly doing whatever but with at least daily race b from this last week where it's on grand national highway and you're in a gt4 car i love that because it had such severe penalties if you just like barely go over a track limit it gives you a half second if you touch the wall second and a half so it kind of forces you in a way to drive better, to drive really conservatively in some cases, because if there weren't no there weren't any penalties, you'd just be dive bombing people. But at this point I'm just rambling. Try out sport motive if you can. If you can't, I understand. If you can't afford sport mode, I genuinely advise to try out either doing the circuit experience or at the very least trying out like custom events on tracks that you haven't played much of like there are so many tracks in like Japan that I haven't touched in a while there's so many tracks in America that I haven't touched either with that in mind can you imagine like an endurance event around Interlagos god that would be really cool all right and here we are one giant ramble fest and 10 laps later we are here finally going across the line. If you guys quickly notice before I go over the line, I actually increased, decreased my average lap time quite a bit by uh, going on field mode one and then uh, doing some soft tires. So I don't think, as you can tell, we're at 38 minutes. If I really went on soft tires and really worked on fuel saving on fuel mode one, I think three and a half minutes lap is fine times 10 laps. We're still looking at nearly 34 minutes. 
So yeah, that's still still not good enough, unfortunately. Apparently, I didn't get didn't even get my clean race bonus either. Ah, oh, I wonder if it was because I hit the stupid bollards. So there we are. As much as we had all left this new event to be uh, another grind race, I'm actually kind of glad that it isn't because it focuses on just having a good time in my mind when it's now over 35 minutes and the credit payout still isn't. It's going in a better direction. It's not the highest payout. But it's definitely not one of the lower payouts that we've seen, too. The, the, the fact that custom races are still... You race for an hour and you get 15,000 credits is still an absolute insult. So I'm actually quite gra glad that we got another uh, okay-ish payout race. Because it means that when you do this race, you're trying to enjoy yourself. You're trying to have good races in the World Touring Car 900 Power Point Limit. And the GT2 bracket, specifically. So I'm I'm fine with it. So let me know down in the comment section if you agree with this, if you disagree with this, if you enjoy this track, if you don't enjoy this track, if you enjoy this event, if you don't enjoy the event, and primarily if you enjoy the new cars that came out. I actually had a blast with that Toyota GT1. Super, super planted. Handles really well. Very pointed in the front end, and actually not too bad. Is not too much oversteer in the rear. That only got a little bit, a little bit wobbly when uh, the rear soft tires were kind of degrading there. But again, let me know down in the comment section what you guys think. Of course, uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.